right now. So I got the piece cut out and I've got it put in there. And I've got just a few tacks on it. And I basically got it to where it's perfectly even instead of just kind of sloppily sticking it up there and then tacking it in. And you know, when you get done grinding something, if the piece you put in is a little bit lower, you're always gonna be able to tell something was there. So I try to get it perfectly even or at least sticking up just a hair and that way when you grind it it levels everything out real nice but uh, anyway so I cut a pretty good strip out of there because it had some pretty deep pitting on it especially in this area right here now it has a hole in it from the factory it doesn't it's not for anything uh, probably when the frame was being built on the jigs and stuff brand new these were probably alignment uh, holes for some something for the jig I'm assuming but anyway that little hole that's right there I duplicated it in the new piece even though it doesn't go for, go to anything there's two identical to it on the other side and this hole here so it's you know twins so I wanted to put the hole in there just so it doesn't look like it's been patched for having you know a hole missing not that anyone's ever going to notice it's just something I did so we'll go ahead and start putting some little short stitches on here and uh Pretty much just make sure it's good to go at this point. will say when you're when you're if you're going to patch your chassis uh, this metal's pretty thick so make sure you use the same thickness of metal which I did but when you've got something that thick and you're trying to weld it up 45 degree edge both of those like after you cut out your new patch panel 45 degree grind and edge all the way around and then also 45 degree edge the hole in the frame that way when you lay it in there and you start welding it up, you're gonna have it full of weld. It's gonna be penetrated and fit very well. Make sure you got a gap around it too. Don't, don't butt the metal up perfectly, you know, right up against it. Because when you start welding something, it, it likes to move around and it, you know, so it, it could bind up in there and then you could cause an alignment issue where you can't get one edge up. But I like to use a little pocket screwdriver, a little flat blade, and that way when I start down here and then I do another one, if it starts tweaking it out and that panel moved in, which in this case, this corner went down a little bit, I stuck the screwdriver in there and just pried it back up even and then tacked it. So it's just how I do it. You can do it however you want. Just telling you what I was taught. That's, that's what I do. So I'm going to show you a little something to check. I had to weld up my wife's four door frame and I think I only had to do one on the hard top, but this is, this can be common, I guess, because I've seen it quite a few times, but this top inner rail right here, the factory put a weld across there. That is not connected anymore. This one's not connected anymore either. So what I usually do is I go in here and I will put a cut, take a cutoff wheel and I will cut this right through here just to straighten it out a little bit. And then I will go in and take a Rolock 36 grit blaze disc on the angle grinder and I'll grind that weld down flush with the chassis on both sides. And then I'll go in and I'll clamp vice grips right here. Uh, that way I'll have a handle uh, to hold on to and I can push down and weld this. Because this needs to be, you know, pushed down. So, oh, here we go right here. I was sitting on them. Just take them right there like that. And 
give it a little bit of tension down and then put a new little stitch on there so i'm gonna have to redo both sides but you need to check that because if you're standing there looking down at it it would look like it's welded but it's really not but it's just it's just common these chassis are designed to flex they just have this uh, cradle member in the front and they have the bar in the back and it's all riveted together uh, so and I guess welded too but they are designed to flex like you're you know you can jack up one corner it doesn't matter which corner of the four corners you can jack it up and the frame will actually flex so that's that's why they sell those aftermarket X centers and the aftermarket chassis that already have an X in them but when you put an X center in here, reinforcement in the center of the frame, kind of reminiscent of what the convertibles had, it really stiffens the car up quite a bit. Uh, I've done three of those centers just hand fabbed out of two by four. And uh, anyway, they, it just, it changes the way the cars drive and, and ride. They still ride good, but it, it sure does help it out with uh, being stable, I guess. All right, so I sliced that right there, and I did this one too. So now I can get in there with my blaze disc, and I can work that weld down, or just level out the frame there. Then I'll clamp the vice grips on and push over with the left hand and then stitch weld this the full length. So when I'm doing these chassis on these Tri-5s, when you open the hood, if somebody's looking in, in your engine compartment, a lot of this up in the cradle center section, a lot of this is visible. So there's all kinds of welding slag and, and slag tracks and just all kinds of stuff all over the frame. Like there's a little spot here. There's a big glop of it right through here and then a big buildup right here. It's way out, up here instead of being on this. But here's a good slag track that kind of ate in quite a bit down through here. There's a couple little big pieces here and then again right here so what i like to do is once everything's blasted uh, down with you know blasted and clean i'll go in with the 36 grit blaze and i'll smooth everything off and then anything that's low i will put putty in there and then sand it down and then prime it uh, i mainly just do this front area because this is what's visible if i just went in there and painted over that you know all this stuff you would see all these pits and craters so like all of this top, all these pitting and all this crap is going to get uh, fixed on just the top side of the frame. There's some more slag track stuff here. But anyway, it'll just look a lot better just spending, you know, another few hours on it. And, and it's a, it makes a huge difference when it's finished. I did not get near as far as I wanted to, I tell you. So I got this. I got this piece patched in. It turned out pretty damn nice. <laughs> pretty impressed with it. And with me drilling that hole in there, it matches. You know, it looks like it's supposed to because there it is on this side. So, uh, let's see, there's a little bitty hole still left from here from after I'd welded it and grounded it the first time. So I went ahead and zapped it again, rehit it. And then I got to looking right here, and there's actually a crack right here. So, I'm going to go uh, tomorrow. That is going to be my thing for tomorrow. I'm going to clean this area up really, really nice with a uh, knotted cut brush, a stainless steel one to get it clean. And then I'm going to put my magnifying goggles on that my really good friend Jeremy bought me. And I'm going to put the highest lens in there which is I think a 3.25 or 3.50 and I'm gonna look at this real good and I'm gonna drill a hole at the end of each one of them cracks and then I'm gonna go in there and I'm gonna open that up I'm gonna use a really small cone tip on the die grinder and go in there and just dig a trench in that crack and anyway I'm gonna go in and turn the welder up on high and I'm gonna go in and fully weld that and go back and grind it so it's a it's a good thing I was working in this area and I noticed that. But train. I've still got to remove these top pieces on both sides. But man, I tell you, there's just there's just not enough hours in the day 
because uh, when I get in there and start trying to do stuff to, you know, with the way I do things, I'm always a little bit slower, but I, I try to do the best job I can, you know what I mean? So, uh, fix a crack tomorrow, and then I think it's ready to flip over and start working on the other side, the top side. These uh, emergency brake cable brackets right here is one on each side. These were actually bent. So when I straightened them out to where they needed to be, uh, the part right here, the little lip that comes down on it, it was kind of off the frame a little bit. So I put a little stitch on both of them. I cleaned up the metal real good and then I put a stitch in there. So, I mean, they're, they're pretty much on there. I don't think they're going anywhere, but it was just a little added thing there to make me feel better about it. But I am done for today. It is already five o'clock. So tomorrow when I flip it over, I'm gonna fix that crack, get the top pieces of the transmission mounts off. I gotta drill these splash apron brackets out, grind the tops, weld on some quarter by 20 nuts, and, man. Oh, finish welding up the tops, just a few stitches on the top of the rock guards back here. And I think, I think, the frame will be done. So, oh no, it's not. I forget about this part. This is all caved in right here. So I'm gonna cut this out right here. I talked about this in another video. This is where a bumper bracket bolts on and this is pushed in. It's caved in pretty far and there's really not a lot of good access to the back of that. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this area off, turn this upside down and hammer it all flat. And then this will have to be dolly a little bit because this is pushed up right here. So I'll hammer this out. But anyway, I will weld that piece right back in there. And then I think the frame will be done. I still got to dolly the top lip edge on the, on the top, but that won't take that long. So in, in actuality, it's probably another, another day, another day tomorrow of chassis prep. Then I'm going to go in and try to clean it up the best I can, see if I can get anything done with it. But uh, it may end up having to go to the blaster because if it looks like it's going to take me a lot longer to get it all clean metal, it's probably going to be better to take it and have it done. I tried calling the blaster and I didn't get an answer machine or an answer. It just kept ringing, so I don't know what's up with that. But I haven't contacted that guy in like six years, so that may not even be his phone anymore. Thanks for watching.